This is Natural Powerlifting Radio. Deadlifts, chicken nuggets, video games. This is Check My Total, a powerlifting podcast with Timothy Payne and Andrew Henson. Hello, everyone. It's another episode of Check My Total. This episode, it's just me and Timmy, and we are going to talk about something that I don't think it's talked about that often or else, I don't know, you just don't see too many YouTube videos on this. So we're going to talk about how to warm up for a competition. So when you get to a competition, they got the warm-up room, or at least they should have a warm-up room. That'd be pretty rough if they didn't. (laughs) But we're going to talk about how to go about that and some of the mistakes we see a ton of people make and all that good stuff. So, well, let's see. You got any funny warm-up room stories? Uh, not really. I had somebody steer like steal my chair once, but that's about it. Wait, the judge chair? No, like I was warming up, and I got through warming up, and I was like waiting. Which really, mm. I guess this has nothing to do with the actual warming up. But you know how I usually have a chair or something that you sit in while the flight goes through, you know, like you're waiting for it to come back to you. Oh yeah. I've just had people steal my chair before. Well, I was oh wondering. man! I don't know. You go I out think, the lift and you come back and your chair's taken. Yeah, well, that's the worst. <laughs> but no, um, I nothing I can think of. Which has been a long time since I've been in a warm-up area competing. Yeah, I think I have. It was the very first time I ever competed. Uh, it wasn't an Iron Boy. I don't even know. I forget what it is. It was like World Natural something. I don't know. That was like. 14 or something, I think. Maybe 13. Yeah. But uh, it was back when I was with Cravey. So I go to this. This gym was really interesting. So it was like a it was a basketball gym that you actually competed in. But the warm up area was on the second floor of this building. So the weight room was on the was on the second floor, which that's a little weird. So I go to the second floor. And it's a pretty nice place. I can't, it was some university. I can't remember. It, I might have even been in South Carolina, but it, it was second floor and they had all the power racks and deadlift platforms and they had a ton of machines, like cable machines. But like when someone was warming up or like doing a deadlift, like the whole like building would like rock back and forth because it was on the second floor. So like everyone heard it and like, I don't know. I don't think I'd want a gym in on the second floor. You'd have to, but, like, reinforce the floor. Yeah, but I'll never, I remember there was this guy there, and I think he was, I'm pretty sure he's quite a bit older than me, but he was going crazy, crazy in this warm-up room. It, we were, I don't even know what we were warming up for. I'm pretty sure we were just warming up for squats, but this man was deadlifting. <laughs> <laughs> so that's one thing. You, you might not want to deadlift. If you're warming up for squats, unless that's how you normally warm up for squats by deadlifting. But this guy was going crazy. This guy, he had a, he, he was with his, I don't know, dad or coach or his workout partner or something. But man, they were getting, his tongue was out. He would like deadlift with his tongue out and like, well, I mean, he were they like, like slamming the weights around and stuff? Yeah. Okay. They were going crazy. They, the guy, the guy was like, like at a rock concert. His tongue was out, and he was like yelling and dropping the weights everywhere. And I was like, oh my goodness! I was like, what in the world? And I'm just a newbie over here. I'm like, oh man, I'm just, I'm just trying to get through this thing. I'm just trying to figure out how to do something. Never did a competition. And like, man, this guy was nuts. The building, the ground shaking, tongues out. I was like, man, this guy was crazy. If I remember correctly, he didn't do too well. Well, he wasted all his energy in the warm-up room. Yeah, he was, he was killing it. Any other crazy stuff happen to you? Or crazy stuff that mm. you've seen? Mm. Uh, not really. I have to poop really bad sometimes. Warm it up in a competition for some reason. But other than that, I don't know. I haven't seen anything too crazy. Yeah, it seems like you always have to go to the bathroom, like when you're wearing your singlet. Yeah. 
<laughs> which is the <laughs> worst thing to try to get in and out of to use the bathroom in. It really is. Like, it takes forever to take that thing off. So, yeah, that's about all the crazy stuff I've seen, but nothing too crazy. Um, but I think the main the main issue is like I think when it comes to warming up for a competition, I don't people I don't think get time management at all, and uh, it's hard. Like they don't understand when they should start warming up or how they should warm up, or they don't really get it. Like right. they they go back there and they it's almost like they're doing a workout, or they don't they do enough. Yeah, we had a guy um, come to the meet once. He was he was wearing a bin shirt, but he was asking when his fly would start. And I was like, well, first off, I don't even know what flight you're in. But you know, generally, if you're in the later flights, like if you're in the second flight, you want to start warming up. Usually, when the first flight's you know about to do their second attempts or so, and yeah. I told him this and everything. He's like, "Well, I need two hours to warm up." <laughs> I was like, <laughs> "What are you talking about?" But anyways, this guy pretty much does a full like two hour warm up before he goes out and benches. Oh my goodness! Like, cause he did like all kinds of raw stuff and like hit a single raw before he put his shirt on, and then what? had to do like board presses. And then he could go on the platform and lift. It was pretty crazy. Oh, my goodness. But yeah, he, he warmed up for like two hours. Because he started oh. warming up, you know, right after we got done with the uh, lifters meeting. Like I said, he was in like the second or the third flight. Mm-hmm. I don't know. That, that was a little different. Yeah, I think one of the first things you got to do if you're competing is you have to check what flight you're in. Oh, yeah. Whether whether it's the day of or the day day before or whatever, you have to you have to know what flight you're in and how many people are in each flight. But um, like I mean, as you said, a general rule like it really depends like how long it takes you to warm up. But I think the goal here is to warm up and not work yourself. Like just get a little blood flowing, get some get a little bit of sweat, and then quit. Like. You don't you don't need to go in there and kill yourself. But generally, I do whatever flight I'm on. If I'm second or third, if uh, about on on the second attempts of I would say second attempts of everyone's lifts, I'll start warming up. Maybe even halfway through first attempts, but somewhere around there, I'll start warming up. Um, you know, I'll take a little bit longer on squat and deadlift, um, but about halfway through the flight that's before me, I'll start. Yeah, and like you said, the main objective is just to get blood going in your muscles and get a sweat going. You don't need to do a whole workout because, one, you'll pre-exhaust yourself before you even try to max out on the platform. Mm-hmm. And, uh... Like, for example, what did you do that day that you had to lift outside? No, uh, I cut my warm-up, and I think I, I remember I just did, I warmed up and, like, only did singles, and I think I might have only done maybe six sets of singles, like, and that's, like, starting at, like, 135 and going up to whatever, and because I was, I was drenched, and I was like, well... I ain't, ain't, ain't no point. I'm just going to sit down in the sun. Like, yeah, because this meet was, like, outside in June or something. So it was a hot day. Yeah, so I just did enough to get a feel for, like, a 75%, 80% lift. And, like, I don't even know if I squatted 80%. I think I might have just put it on, walked it out, and put it back. Because was, it was hot. So... And generally, that's the way I'll warm up, too. Even if it's not hot, I might do, you know, something high rep with the bar, you know, 10, 15, and then maybe 135, 8 or 10, depending on what the lift is, you know. Like, let's say if we're squatting, I might do, 
you know, three or five reps with 225, but as soon as I go to 275, I'll start doing singles. Even if yeah. I'm going up to like 405. So it'd yeah. be, it, it's a bunch of singles. And that's what I did back in October. I did singles. Like I, I think the only time I did reps is I did bar 135 for maybe five or six. I did 225 for maybe three or four. And then after that, after 225, I think I, I just did very, uh, controlled, concentrated singles and that's it. And I think I, I think my last squat, I opened up at like five something, 500, 505, I don't know. But I think my last squat was 440, 450, I don't know. Something like that. So. There's a lot of people too that will do their opener. Or their max in the warm-up area before oh, they go out goodness. and do it. What is the point in that? Like, you have your opener. If you can't hit your opener, it's too high. Yeah, that's true. It's well, too high. I think a lot of it is just trusting your training for one thing. And mm-hmm. uh, I guess just being nervous. Like, a lot of new people will do that. Scared that once they get on the platform, they won't be able to hit whatever they wrote down. But yeah, you just gotta trust what you're doing. Yeah, and then another thing is, I think one thing is definitely the nerves. And, uh, if you're not confident in yourself, and like you see a bunch of other people in the warm up room, and like this guy's warming up with 500 pounds, or like he's in the same weight class as you, or whatever it is, and you see everyone doing heavier warm ups than you, that gets you nervous, and it makes you wanna go heavier in the warm up room when it don't matter. Yeah. The platform's like two feet away. Yeah. Like, just, just wait a little bit. Let, let these big boys kill themselves in the warm up room and you go out there and do what you need to do. Um, so, I think that's, that's a big thing is the nerves. People get nervous and they don't, uh, they don't trust their training or they just don't know what they're doing. Um, I've also warmed up too early before, like warmed up, got done, and then got cold before I even got on the platform. Yeah, that's happened to me. I think once, like you, it's tricky. I mean, it's a timing thing. It's sometimes you you might undershoot or overshoot, and it's you definitely don't want to get done warming up and then sit in a chair for thirty minutes. Yeah. So. What I do is I like to warm up and then I like to sit down for about 10 minutes. 10 to 5 10 to about 10 to 12 minutes and then I like to go. So that's kind of what I kind of time it at. So warm up, you know, get blood going, sit down for about 10 12 minutes and then hopefully it's around my time to do my opener yeah i agree with that and um if you are worried about getting cold you can always put sweats back on while you're waiting to lift Mm -hmm. i've done that before like be deadlifting and you know the the uh, venue or whatever actually has some air conditioning going so it's kind of cool so you know i'll deadlift warm up and then I'll turn around and put some sweatpants on until it's ready, until I'm, like, on deck. Then once yep. you're on deck, you can just take whatever clothes off and go lift. Start stripping. Yeah. And then another thing about the deadlifts is the way I feel, I've already done squats. I've already done bench. I've done two lifts. When I'm warming up for deadlifts, I, I mean, I don't do much. It's like. Whatever, like, if I, let's say I'm opening, let's say, yeah, let's say I'm just going to open up at a, like, 500, that's a round number. So, like, if it's the end of the day, and my opener is 500, like, I'm going up there, and I'm going to warm up, and I'm going to do 135, I'll do 225, and these are singles, 135, maybe, maybe triple at 135, single at 225, single at 315, Single at 400, single at maybe, f- no, I think I'll stop there. I think I'll stop at 405, honestly. 
Well, that's another thing I was going to ask. Like, if you are doing a full power meet and you're already, like you said, already warmed up, and it's time for the deadlift, can you start? You said you're going to open with five or whatever. Can you start with just 315, or do you have to start with that 135? Mm, I think it kind of depends. Like, I I have to start with the 135 because that's how I always do it. Okay. It's like more of a mental thing. Okay. Like I have to start. I have to start there, just because that's what I always do. You know, de- de- warming up for deadlifts in the gym, just training. I'm by start 135. So, but I'm not really pulling 135 to warm up. I'm just pulling it because I've always done it. Okay. Like I'll, I'll pull a triple, then everything else is singles. But I, I mean, I I ain't got no problem pulling a hundred pounds less than I'm gonna deadlift in the warm up area. And then going for it, like, I'm okay. With, well, I'm okay with that because I've been doing it for a while. Like, maybe other people might need to do, if their opener is 500, maybe they might need to hit a 430 or something, maybe a 440 and then go. But, yeah, I'm, I mean, I'm experience okay. has a lot to do with how you warm up, knowing how your body reacts to doing different things. Yeah. Because, like you said, you might could jump 100 pounds on your deadlift, but I know I can't do that for, like, the squat. So each each event is different, too, as far yeah. as what your nervous system and your body can handle. Because, yeah, if I were to, you know, open up with 405 or something squatting, but my last warm-up was 305, <laughs> that wouldn't happen. <laughs> yeah. But for some reason, the deadlift... It works that way. I don't know. It's not as bad. I guess it doesn't yeah. tax your body as much. I don't know. Your nervous system. I think it's just like you don't have to deal with the walkout, and you don't have to deal with it filling on your back, and then like it's all it's just on the ground. And you just gotta go pick it up. Like yeah, you don't have to get that feel because I have to get adjusted to the weight on my back when I'm warming up for squats. Like I gotta get adjusted to how it feels. So a hundred pound jump on the squat ain't gonna work for me, but deadlift I'm fine. And it's possible, and it's also because at the end of the day, like during a normal deadlift day, like at the gym just training, I can't do a hundred pound jump. No, like I can't just be like three fifteen, four fifteen, then five fifteen. I can't, I can't just do that in the gym when I'm training. I gotta take smaller ones because that's the only lift I've done, and I'm just taking longer to warm up. So, but I've already squatted and benched and warmed up for all two of those events. I'm pretty much good to go almost. So I think I can cut it, cut it a bit short for the deadlift. Do, um, you, do you take any more time or anything with your bench press? Hmm. I mean, my bench press is my shortest warm up. Just, okay. Well, I say it. I probably do the most sets and reps on my bench warm up, but overall it takes a shorter amount of time than warming up for a squat or deadlift. Like I'll hit I'll I'll probably do triples, doubles until I'm at like mm, I don't know, 80% then I might do like two singles or something. Like I'm pretty sure in October I think my last warm up bench press, I think I hit like 315, 325 for my last warm up. In my open, no, I did a 315, and my opener was 340. Okay, so you'll get a little bit closer on your bench press. Oh, yeah, I'll get a little. With. I'll get a little bit closer. So it's a little bit different there. Just yeah. you know, it's I gotta take. I can't do. Like, for me, I can't do, uh, like, a 50-pound increase from, like, a weight. Like, I can't just warm up at, like, 275 and throw 340 on there. Like, I, that, that just does not go well. Oh, yeah. I need, a, need something in between. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, you got to manage your flights. You got to know where you're at. You got to... Learn how know how long it takes you to warm up. I think one thing is if you're if you're getting ready for a competition is to have a have a time like have a day 
before the competition, like maybe a week out, week and a half out, where you kind of feel like how how long you need to warm up or like during your training, like see how long it takes you to warm up for a squat workout. Yeah. See how long it takes you to warm up for a bench and kind of, you know, time yourself and kind of see what, what works and how much time you need on average and uh, just be prepared to do that on the competition day. Um, but the main thing is you just don't want to do a workout. You just want to get some sweat going. Um, you're, you don't need to be, be lifting heavy in the warm up area. That's what the platform's for. Now, do you, do you do a lot of non dumbbells or barbell stuff? Like, do you roll out and stretch and all that kind of mess? Uh, yeah, before I'll do, I'll be rolling out and stretching before any flight. Like I'll get there, weigh in, eat some food, then just start stretching and rolling out some, not a ton, just some, you know, doing some like leg kicks and, you know, foam rolling, rolling on baseball, just a little bit, not a whole lot. Uh, just make sure I'm loose and feel good. And I'll do that before the squat even starts. Even 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 the flight flight one of squat starts just get a little loose. Um, Alrighty. But yeah, not not too much. Well, I think you summed it up. Just don't do a workout. Yeah, just don't do a workout. Manage your time. Uh, eat some food. You know, don't don't go starving yourself. Yeah. Eat some food. Um. And yeah, that's don't don't try and outlift someone in the warm up room. Outlift no. them on the platform. Oh yeah, that's where it counts anyway. Yeah, that's where it counts. So yeah, I think that's I think that's it. Me too. All right, that's it. Remember, time management one hundred and one. It's like freshman year of college. You got that eight thirty in the morning class, but you can never get up, and you always wake up at nine thirty. That's how you set yourself up to be homeless. Don't be homeless, people. Know your flight. Know your squat. Know your bench. Know your deadlift. Know whose child you got. And know who's got your financial aid. That's it. I'm out. We out. Please subscribe and thank you for listening. Be sure to follow at CheckMyTotal on Instagram for all the latest updates. Don't forget the IBP South Carolina State Powerlifting Championships in Spartanburg, South Carolina on August the 18th. For more information about the competition, please visit ironboypowerlifting.com. <laughs> well, there's a podcast. <laughs>